opportunity to gather together and Lord just ask that you be with us as we go through this meeting and just let it be conducted in peace and harmony Lord and we ask that you watch over and protect each and every one of us. We ask that you be with those that are being infected by the COVID-19 virus Lord and just protect them and comfort them. Lord I ask that you keep us safe to make it home to our appointed places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll read the Carroll County's school's budget first. Pursuant to Section 15.2-2506 of the Code of Virginia in 1950, amendments thereto, the Carroll County Board of Supervisors conduct a public hearing. The line expenditure portion of the advertisement is for planning purposes. However, the total revenue and expenditures in total are as proof for advertisement. Public hearing will be held on Monday, June 22, 2020, at the Carroll County High School Auditorium, Hills of Virginia, at 7 p.m., for shortly thereafter. The purpose of the public hearing is to provide the citizens of Carroll County an opportunity to comment on the proposed school budget. On the expenditure side, the following items, line items, have been added instruction, administration, attendance and health, pupil transportation. Operation maintenance, school food service, federal programs, technology, buses, building maintenance, and debt service for a total proposed budget of $49,100,818. On the receipt side, the descriptions of the state are state funds, federal funds, local funds, required local effort, local funds undesignated. Local funds buses, local funds building maintenance, local funds debt service, and miscellaneous income for a total proposed receipts of $49,818,000, which is a $104,971 increase from fiscal year 20. The second portion of the public hearing is the notice of public hearing for the proposed Carroll County budget for fiscal year 2020-2021. The proposed tax levy for county year 20 for Carroll County, Virginia. Pursuant to section 15.2-2506 of the Code of Virginia and amendments thereto, the Carroll County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is to give the citizens of Carroll County an opportunity to comment on the proposed county budget which includes the school board budget for fiscal year 2020-21 and the tax levy levy for calendar year 2020. The public hearing will be held on Monday, June 22, 2020, in the boardroom, excuse me, at the Carroll County Auditorium. As soon as there after his practice, due to the public health threat by COVID-19 guidance, current guidance of Governor Virginia social distancing public gatherings, the meeting will occur as allowed with the physical attendance of in-person gatherings limited to less than 50 people. The budget synopsis is prepared and published for information and fiscal purposes only. The inclusion of the budget of any item or items does not constitute an obligation to be part of the Board of Supervisors of Carroll County to any appropriation of any funds for that item or purpose. There is no allocation or designation of any funds of this county for any purpose until there has been an appropriation for that purpose by the Carroll County Board of Supervisors. The budget has been prepared on the basis of estimates and requests submitted to the Board of Supervisors by the Constitution officers, intergovernmental agencies, non-governmental agencies, department heads of Carroll County, and the review of the county administrator. The tax levy is included with this public notice. On the expenditure side, general government administration is proposed for $2,386,000. Judicial administration, $2,426,160. Public safety, $2,223,175. Public works, $2,140,085. Health and welfare, $8,292,500. Education, $49,343,631. Parks, Recreation, and Culture, $619,000. Community Development, $1,142,286. And Non-Departmental is $2,547,096. For a total proposed budget of $79,126,49. On the revenue side, the local revenues, total local funds are $33,985,079. Total state funds are thirty-seven million four nine nine one forty-three. The federal funds are seven million six hundred thirty-six four hundred twenty-seven dollars for seventy-nine million one twenty-six forty-nine for 
a proposed balanced budget. Proposed tax levies for 2020 for real estate are 73 cents, which is a three and a half cent difference from fiscal year or county year 2019, which is a 4.795% increase. Tangible personal property is proposed to increase from $1.95 to $2.30, a 15.217% increase. Machine and tools is proposed to go from $1.65 to $2.00, a 17.5% increase. Purchase capital, which was frozen by the General Assembly many years ago, is 69 cents and will continue to be 69 cents. The purpose of such taxes, when and if appropriate, the Carroll County Board Super shall be to defray the county's charges incidental, incidental to or arising from the execution of lawful authority of the Board of Supervisors of Carroll County. There's two special tax classes created with and proposed by this ordinance. Any airplane under a million dollar assessed value would be assessed at one dollar per hundred value of the current assessment. Data centers value they go for ten million the assessed value. The proposed rate is one dollar per one hundred assessed value. These notices were prepared by the order of the Care County Board of Supervisors and submitted by Arsene Weldon. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have a few comments before we continue on with the other public comments. Mr. Chair, members of the board, superintendent of schools, school board members, staff, and other guests, the FY21 budget process has been nothing less than excruciating and painful with all kinds of pitfalls and problems. We started the process last November with expectations to be completed by March. In February, due to unforeseen problems, we had to go mid-year budget cuts of over $2 million. In the middle of the budget process, along came COVID-19, which complicated the issues along with unexpected consequences of stay-at-home orders, not only here, but nationwide order, which has reduced collections and disrupted day-to-day -day life. As we hear more and more from our surrounding localities and ourselves as we look through our budget, we can expect large shortfalls in some of the items that we have proposed. We went through remote meetings, empty board meetings, wearing face masks, protect everybody from COVID-19. But today is the first meeting that we have allowed any more than nine people into the meeting. We've heard much and probably are, are all tired of hearing about our financial woes, uh, me included. A good Carroll County person I trust on the other day to quit talking about it and do something. The proposed budget that you have is a balanced budget. It takes in everything that the county is supposed to be doing. Does it hurt? Yes, it hurts. It hurts education. It hurts staff. It hurts every aspect of the county. As you go through the budget, not one department, except for regional jail and social service, has been negatively have all been negatively impacted by this budget. As everybody knows, the expenditure budget has been in the seventy some million dollar range for several years for Carroll County, which is about six million dollars of. <coughs> I guess expenditure per month if you could equally divide it. However, all of us know that we have huge expenses at the start of the fiscal year with debt service, which spread our budget out of California, especially cash flow. We moved to this year with twice a year tax collections. We hope that will ease the cash flow problems that we have. Uh, with the slow collections that we're seeing based off the reports from the Treasurer's Office, uh, that to be seen. After almost 30 years working in government, uh, I have one of the things that, that to say tonight, that I'm not particularly proud of this proposed budget as I have been in the past. I feel it affects 
departments and schools and everybody fairly terrible. However, based off the Code of Virginia and our requirements and the board requirements to balance the budget and take that one out and divvy it out so that we all get a little piece of it. Hopefully we have went through and balanced that out to the best of our abilities. I am sure tonight we will hear comments that uh, people will feel we have unfairly cut their budget. One of the better things about our budget this year is we will see in the future we will have debt service pay downs which will allow the board great flexibility in, in the future. With our financial forecast that will soon be completed, we will expect by fiscal year 22 that the board will have funds available to allow them to go back into a capital improvement plan schools and address some of those issues that know that are out there as we visit every school in the county. We know there's maintenance problems. We know that there's construction that needs to be done. School construction, as I told everybody, is never over because there are buildings. Technology changes, things change, so the buildings have to change. So tonight, we present a budget to you that is balanced, not to anyone's liking, but particularly my own, but it is the budget. And thank you, gentlemen, for allowing me to make this presentation. Thank you. I apologize. It's very difficult to see the audience because of the lights, but is Dr. Burnett here? I thought that was you. Come on up if you'd like to make some comments on the school board budget. Between the lights, if I asked you, it's hard to tell that was you.
messages that we have received by letter and by phone, and that will be the first thing we'll do, and then we'll get to the live presentations. Gladys Nairier. I'm a tax-paying citizen. As a matter of fact, I went today to pay my taxes. I'm a Title I paraprofessional for the Carroll County Public School System. I have been in the school system for 20 years. I love my job working with children, and I'm so glad God put me in this position because I've considered all of my students my family. I would like to see the school system get the funds needed to prepare our students for a challenging future ahead of them. I also would not like to be punished with my insurance price going up because of all the non-paying, tax-paying residents of Carroll County. I have always paid my taxes on time each year, but if my insurance price continues to rise, that means I will bring home less pay and it will be hard. I did not know it was an option to pay taxes. Thank you for your time to read my email. My prayer is that all of you make the right decision for the working people and the tax-paying people. Pamela Burnett, to the Board of Supervisors members and County Administrator, will projects like this be able to continue with reduced funding for your schools, referencing a June 16, 2020 Carroll News article? Are you prepared for the students of Carroll County to face the negative consequences of your decisions? Don't they deserve the best from you to prepare them for an awesome, successful future?
to cut our school systems would further build a gap for students leaving this area who plan to obtain degrees, uh, will build a great gap, I apologize, to students who plan to leave this area and plan to obtain degrees and will discourage those who would ever wish to return. Cuts of the school system would be only a detriment to this county and its future for years to come. Please know that as parents, we are grateful for the funding that you do allow our children, and we ask that you think not only of their futures, but those every citizen in this county uh, for generations to come. And I wanted to add on a more personal level, my role is as treasurer of the PTSO, which I've been in all of uh, two to three weeks. Um, but my profession is I am a certified public accountant that has worked in finance for 20 years. I do understand that a budget is a zero-sum game. The county's expenses cannot exceed its revenues. However, I believe a cut in funding to our schools at this time would result in families looking to leave Carroll County seeking a better education for their, ch for their children, resulting in fewer students and less funds in years to come. That is nothing short of a terrifying cycle for this mother of a child who has 10 more years to go in Carroll County Public Schools. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jennifer. There were only three people signed up for the, the school budget the public hearing at uh, Dr. Burnett and Joey Haynes were the first two. And Jennifer was the Is there anybody else who didn't get a chance to sign up? We will go to our county budget for uh, sign up then. Uh, our first speaker is Justin Bernard. specifically to his plans as proposed in the budget, I would like to speak about me. I would like to start telling you a little about me. I was born and raised right here. My early childhood was spent living in Galax. During middle school, my family moved to Woodlawn, where to this day they reside. It was then I transferred to Woodlawn Intermediate School. I was an honor roll student, boy scout, and wrestler. After graduating from Carroll County High School, I enlisted in the Marine Corps. It was then I also married my wife, Sherry. After reaching the rank of sergeant, I was discharged honorably from the Marine Corps. And we packed up and came back home. Sherry got a teacher, got a job with Carroll County, where she continues to teach today. I went back to school. I used my GI Bill to get a degree from WCC, and I graduated with honors. Not long after that, Sherry and I welcomed the first of our two children into this world. I took a job with a respected engineering firm in Blacksburg. And although I was hired through a temp agency, within one year I rose to draft a department manager. The only reason I left was to get closer to home. A position became available with the city of Galax that had an element of GIS to it. By the way, GIS is an acronym that stands for Geographic Information System. Essentially, it's just a map on the computer that has data associated to features on the map. We use GIS to track all things sewer. I wanted to broaden GIS, and one day I saw Carol was looking to hire a GIS for I applied for the job and got it. I'll never forget that first day, August 16, 2010. I walked between those huge columns, going into the government complex, and it inspired me. I was so excited to map out a new discovery. For the past 10 years with the county, I've created maps in support of almost every department within the county and some with the state. I've created countless maps for the county's prior administrations, everything from private easements and property transfer proposals to preliminary layouts of industrial parks, vehicular crash areas, critical infrastructure, county-owned property, or marketing material. I've created maps for the school system, attendance zones, bus routes, and most importantly, a school rapid response map. I've created wall maps for the clerk of court. I've created maps that are part of the county's comprehensive plan. I've created tax maps for the Commissioner of Revenue. I've created maps showing emergency shelters for the Department of Social Services. I've created building permit location maps for the building official. I've created maps that I would use and create the corn maze for the county fair. I've created Labor Day flea market emergency zone maps for fire and rescue. I've 
created road abandonment maps for land use. I've created janitorial assignment maps for the maintenance department. I've created water and sewer maps for the Public Service Authority. I created disc golf course maps for the Recreation Department. I've created grid maps for ongoing investigations with the Sheriff's Department. I've created attractions and visitor maps for tourism. I've created district and precinct maps for voter registration. I've created snowplow assignment maps for VDOT. Not only have I created maps, I've created countless floor plans, graphics, posters, and banners. As much as I recognize my primary duty has been to support government agencies, my real passion has been creating maps for the public. This is the part of the job I enjoy most, creating a map for someone outside the government complex that has a need but doesn't have the resource. It doesn't matter what the map is intended to illustrate or who it is for. I've created maps for citizens when they have a question of the lay of the land or who is their neighbors. I've created cemetery maps for the genealogy club. I've created maps for private utility companies looking to expand their services here in Carroll County. I've created maps for live flown citizens having right-of-way issues, and I've created maps for outsiders looking to retire here. I've created maps for auctioneers to help promote their upcoming sale. I've created maps for loggers, farmers, paper companies, politicians, and churches. I've created maps that would be a gift to a spouse to be hung on the living room wall for generations to come. The GIS department is much more than just the website on the internet that thousands of users around the world visit each day. The GIS department is me, helping anyone that comes through the door, calls, or emails. The GIS department is a place where ordinary citizens, VIPs, county, state, or federal departments can go and get an honest, diligent effort from a government employee. The re recommended mapping budget seemingly doesn't even include me. Instead, it includes a 650% increase in professional services that I can only assume means some kind of outsourcing. <clears throat> Make no mistake, there's no professional service that can provide a more intimate knowledge of the county's geography than I. And to my knowledge, there is no GIS professional service located here in the county that will spend the money here in the county such as I. I understand there's a daunting task before you. Making a balanced budget with increasing expenditures and decreasing revenues is not easy. I understand that we are talking about money here tonight, and I understand that nothing is free. You, me, along with the citizens and visitors of Carroll County must pay for everything proposed here tonight. But please keep in mind the personal and professional services I provide that an outsourced contractor simply won't be bothered with because it's not in their defined scope of services or happy with a long, with a change of order to do. Please keep in mind the accountability I can provide as a county employee. I guarantee I bring more to the county than anyone can offer through outsourcing. Respectfully, I ask that you allow me to continue to be the one that maps the county's history along with its discoveries and future. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Justin. Roger Brooks is next. Now we're having to fund a whole lot more of our own coverage. 
It's a dramatic step that you take. And I ask you to reconsider that, to ease in, and at least ease into it. There are people whose wages are tied to what's happening in the county. Those benefits are only part of the package. Their wages are only part of the package. And I'm fearful you'll start losing, not necessarily not office, but countywide. You'll lose a lot of good resources because they will go elsewhere for better pay and for better benefits. This, that's part of the attraction of public service, is the health care coverage the counties provide. And I know it's a difficult decision for you, but I should consider that. The big issue I really want to have is the day reporting program. The day reporting program has been the single most efficient operating system since Nathan Lyons set the program up. And I asked them to give me a summary, and I provided it. It began in 2013, and through 20, 2020, the avoided jail cost, which is a big ticket item for the county, $200,000 a month when I started, I think we're down to about $150,000 a month now. The avoided jail cost in that time period was $751,000. On top of that, the labor provided by those folks, where there were comparable places that we could put their hourly rate, there. so if somebody, the county's going to hire somebody to mow grass, and they pay 10 bucks an hour, that community service to that person is county is credit at 10 bucks an hour. It was another $73,000. The program cost, which I'm sure is something that you're concerned about, during that same time period, was about $298,000. That's a program savings of over seven years of $527,000 by having a program. The flip side is, if you eliminate the program, that $750,000 in jail cost is going to come right back to the bottom line. This is a program that costs the county. A little bit to operate, but brings back two, almost three times, two times what it costs to operate. It's a cash flow positive. In a budget that most everything you've got is costing you money, this is saving you money. Quite frankly, I'd recommend this double the program because instead of saving a half a million dollars in seven years, we could save a million dollars in that same time period. But folks, not having to go to jail. We all know it costs us $888 a month for each person who's in there. And we also know the low numbers we have right now, we're going to see climb back up as the jail system, as the court system is opening back up. I've made some changes and they've had some beneficial effect, but I think a bigger piece is going to slow down. And I'm fearful that's going to come more back to the large part of where we work. This program creates positive for the county. That can't be ignored, it should be ignored. It saves us money and it gives the courts and my office an opportunity to do something. Somebody has a choice, put them in jail for some time, and some folks that's no choice to do. Protect the nonviolent offenders who would be flagged for jail time under the state's guideline system and putting them out in the community who could do good things to help the community. I ask you to reconsider funding this program. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Tensites, please. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for your time. I just want to start with first and foremost, thank you for your hard work on this budget. I understand that it's been a very difficult task and can't imagine how hard it's been the decisions you've had to make. Um, but as Sheriff of Kern County, um, I do want to stand up and, and to say a few words about my upcoming budget and, and the importance of um, what we have to do in taking care of our citizens. First and foremost, the priority is our safety. Um, but I do appreciate what you have done, and I understand that that was not easy decisions. And I do want to recommend and I do want to commend you all for that hard work that you've done. Now, there is a packet that I have put together, a small packet that you all should have with you that you've gotten from my office. Um, I just want to highlight the fact that um, there was a significant amount of uh, funds left over remaining in our budget from the 2020 fiscal year. Uh, I'm going to request that those, very hard to request, that those funds be carried back over the 2021 fiscal budget. Um, those funds, a uh, significant amount of that, I believe it was $294,570.09, is the total of the amount. But $211,731 of that was board approved in July of 2019. 
and was to be appropriated, and it was not allocated to my office until June of 2020. Um, it would be very vital for my office operations for those to be carried back over uh, to us. Uh, we are going to need several things coming up this year, and I've provided those list of items to be changed over and what they already should have that in your, in your packets. I'm not going to go through that list. It's very lengthy, but it will break it down very simple for you. And you can always contact me if you have any questions or Chief Spangler. Um, but to highlight the very end of it there, you'll see this is going to be a request for motor vehicles. We are in of those. As you know, we, as law enforcement officers, those things get a lot of miles and they go through very quickly. And last year, we was not able to get any due to budget restraints. I believe we were sharing partners uh, time there. Um, over time, cumulatively, name bonuses, and it's all broke down there what those requests are. Um, once again, if you could reconsider some of those items and look at that, it would be greatly appreciated. I do respect the fact that these are tough times and the COVID-19 has hit us all, uh, my office included. Um, we have had to go through many different changes as well. And um, I also would like to also mention the fact to reiterate what Commonwealth Attorney Brooks has stated, um, the importance of the day reporting program, what that does for our county. And the, the numbers he gave there was absolutely uh, spot on, and I couldn't say any better than he did. And um, I would appreciate your time and consideration and looking into these matters for me. And I do appreciate all your hard work in this matter. If you have any questions for me or Chief Spangler, we're here for you right now, or you can contact us later. I'm sure. Thank you. Uh, Donna Spangler, is there next week? Ken Miller is up next.
Section 58.1-3819, the transient occupancy tax. It is important to note that this means it is the tourists that fund the tourism department operations in the county, not the tax-paying residents. Tourists do stop at certified Virginia visitor centers like ours, talk with travel counselors, and make decisions on where to spend their travel dollars based on these interactions. Back in 2009, Carroll County very smartly added local art and craft shopping to its visitor center experience. Not only do tourists really love this opportunity to support our local artisans, but the revenues generated help the county offset the cost of operating a visitor center. Art and craft sales have grown year over year, and until the visitor center was shut down in mid-March for COVID, it was tracking to grow by an excess of 30% with improved profit margins. The Artisan Center supports over 180 local craft people, many of whom are residents of the county. Some are retirees, and others use the income generated from sales at the visitor center to support their households. Tourism is both strategic and important to Carroll County. We must invest in tourism to realize the full potential of a vibrant local tourism economy. Our visitor center with artisan crafts and souvenir merchandise is a genuine differentiator among the Virginia Mountain counties and towns. We desperately need this differentiation and investment. I ask again that this board adopt the tourism budget that was presented in February and keep our certified Virginia Visitor Center operating. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.
So the county is only paying 8% of any fund that is spent through the Department of Social Services. That usually doesn't happen with most of the departments that the county is funding. In the budget for fiscal year 21, the salaries of the employees that I have um, is less than what we actually need to keep those employees. Under the green tab, I tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, the second page of it is the total for all of the salaries, and that's just the salaries. That is not the FICA VRS and all those other things, but that is the salaries for the employees of the Department of Social Services. As you can see on the front page, the salaries and wages is around $45,000 less than the amount on the green tab page. Based on the position, that could be two positions that would have to be cut. And let me remind everyone what the department does. Not only are we providing uh, Medicaid and food stamps and uh, energy assistance to the community, this whole community, but we're also providing child protective services, adult protective services, and foster care. Foster care has always been a big issue because we've had so many. Currently, we have 74 children in foster care. Four months ago, it was close to 90. We have diligently been working to get children out of foster care into permanent homes, either adopted or back with their family. The fact that that many children have been taken out of foster care shows the amount of work that this office is doing. And during the COVID, when the majority of the Department of Social Services in the, in the state have been working from home and teleworking, Carroll County Department of Social Services have been in the office. They have been making their mandates on seeing the children and the adults that need to be seen. They're approving the benefits. And we're talking a huge increase in benefits because everybody's on unemployment. And so that means they're applying for Medicaid and food stamps and things of that nature so they can support their family. Those workers that are in that office Monday through Friday are making sure that your community is being taken care of financially. Your children are being taken care of. I need, those workers need to be able to keep their jobs and to have the salaries that they have. The governor was going to approve a 15 or 20 percent increase on starting salaries because our starting salaries were so low, but that was unallotted, I believe is the word that they used. So they took the money that they were going to give the Department of Social Services, so these people that have $300, $400 college loan payments a month could be actually living without having to have, to have Medicaid or um, maybe even food stamps, just depending on if they had more children in their home than themselves. That was taken away. This budget takes away 45000 of what I have right now, of those people that have been working when most of the departments were working from home. I also have highlighted the revenues that are proposed for the Department of Social Services. If you figure that up, um, the local match is around 7%. That, though we are running right now at 8%, that is not typical. So I put the fiscal year expenditures and fiscal year reimbursements under the red tab for 2019. And you can see that the county's local match was 12% in 2019. Unfortunately, the DSS budget runs one month ahead of the county budget, so our year is done, our fiscal year is done. However, we have one more month to pay out for the county. A lot of, I know you guys had to sign off on about $500,000 a couple months ago. That $500,000 was 100% reimbursed back into the county. So, it's just very important. I know you guys have a terrible, unfun job with lots of people begging for more money. 
I'm not begging for more money. I'm just begging for enough to keep what I have. And to keep in mind that the Department of Social Services is one of the few agencies that reimburse at least 85 cents for every dollar the county scans. Supervisors, County Administration, citizens of Carroll County and Tennessee tonight. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Anthony Edwards. I'm president of the Twin County Regional Chamber of Commerce, based out of Galax, Virginia. And I'm a citizen of Carroll County, Virginia, and have been since moving here in uh, September 2012. Uh, before I begin to speak about the Chamber of Commerce tonight, I want to thank uh, the nonprofit organizations in the room the teachers, the uh, administration of the school system, and our law enforcement officers that have joined us tonight. On behalf of the Chamber, I'd like to say thank you for your service, uh, protecting, teaching the current and future generations of our county. Uh, your work is incredible, and thank you on behalf of the Chamber and the directors. Uh, tonight I'm here um, on behalf of our Chamber. Uh, our organization is uh, so I'm trying to get right here with the sound, so forgive me. Um, our Chamber of Commerce uh, represents 135 uh, businesses across Grayson County, the City of Galax, and Carroll County, Virginia. We, have a fit, we currently have a 15-person board of directors uh, consisting of just absolutely incredible individuals throughout those communities. Uh, we've been growing over the past three years. We've been growing uh, year to year from a calendar year basis. We've grown about 32% since the of two, uh, since January 1st, 2019. We have a full-time executive director. She was unable to be here tonight. She sends her best regards. Her name is Laura Witt. She started with our Chamber of Commerce back in mid-April. She's doing a fantastic job working with local businesses in our region and um, helping plan new activities and new endeavors for our Chamber of Commerce. I'm here tonight after receiving the unfortunate news that our funding as a 501c6 nonprofit organization it is not included in the fiscal year 21 budget. Uh, Carroll County has been a longtime partner, uh, member of the Twin County Chamber of Commerce, and we are most appreciative of this. We are very thankful for the funding that we've had over the past several years. And, and even before that, uh, I'm not sure those numbers, but on average, we received about $5,000 of funding the past several years, and that funding has been very critical to our organization, uh, especially coming out of a post-2008 recession environment. Our membership, as I mentioned earlier, is continuing to grow. Uh, we're thankful for businesses investing in us. Um, earlier this year, we were without an executive director for a few months, and the business community has been so excited about what we're doing at the Chamber of Commerce that even during that dark period where we didn't have anybody in the office for two or three months, people were still calling, uh, emailing, to join part on our website about events and opportunities. So we're very thankful for that investment by our community members. Um, as mentioned, the $5,500 that we've uh, grown accustomed to receiving from the county has been very crucial. The budget that my board of directors is looking to approve tomorrow night is around $55,900. And we've had to work to find other avenues to fill that $5,500 that is being left vacant uh, in, in the decision uh, from the county. Uh, that 5500 as you know, is about 10% uh, approximate of our budget, and we've had to work to uh, figure out new strategies, new ways to fill that. Um, on behalf of our board, on behalf of our staff, and the leadership team of the chamber, we, we respect the decision-making that you're, you're having to work through right now. We respect the analysis that you're having to, to do, and uh, the citizens speaking tonight, we, we're respectful of those items. Um, 
as you're reviewing, and uh, again, thank you for allowing us to, uh, for allowing the chamber to speak tonight. Uh, as you're reviewing the budget, making your final decisions on it, I ask that you, you reconsider this decision for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the, the chamber has actually changed its fiscal year setting to restart on July 1 this year so that we can better match with the municipalities. We receive about uh, 60, 55 to 60 percent of our funding at the chamber comes from local municipalities in our region, towns, and the counties, and the city. And um, the the investment that you, you've made in us, as I mentioned, is, is critical. And uh, right now is an important time for us as we start this new fiscal year. We're also starting uh, kind of our new strategic planning uh, for July 1. And uh, starting this upcoming fiscal year, we're going to be working on new networking events and new fundraising opportunities. Uh, we want to partner with the tourism department uh, uh, to look at ways of uh, growing attention to businesses and using some social media strategies that have been very effective for our organization. Uh, so as you're, as you're reviewing ledger items, as you're reviewing investment and nonprofit organizations and these very tough, hard decisions that you're having to make, please know that you, regardless of the decision, you, you have a partner in the Chamber of Commerce. The Tourism Department has a, a friend in the Chamber of Commerce. We want to work together, uh, the textbook word synergy. Uh, we, we want to work together to, to build Carroll County, not just, you know, we, we want to build the region, but, you know, we, we also want to help build Carroll County. 77 coming through the county is, a, is an important uh, piece of our region and drawing folks in. Our executive director has been working this past week uh, speaking with local businesses and trying to form a focus group on a, on a way to advertise our region, advertise the market to outside influences and outside factors to bring people in, especially in this post, uh, hopefully, an upcoming post-COVID-19 environment as people are starting to get out and shop more and visit the area more. We want to be a, a, a partner to our businesses, the members, the businesses and individuals that we represent in Carroll County. And so tonight, uh, as you're looking at ledger items and thinking about return on investment, I ask you to please reconsider, reassess uh, the decision that's been made with the Chamber of uh, Investment this year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Try to think of Horsley, if I pronounced your name correctly. Yes, you did, but I, I think some of these folks are pretty well said. So. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I speak with it as Gary Perkin, Perk Ron. Without saying that uh, 
uh, our first responders um, are on this front line with many other now new dedicated first responders um, and involved in this COVID response. Um, they are not intent. They get sick, they have sick children, they have to call in family emergencies, etc. And when we limit our part-time availability, we are really restricting the current level of service that we are striving to provide. So uh, in your consideration for finalizing the budget, I just do ask you to draw your attention to that and consider or reconsider that substantial cut to our part-time salary and wages. Thank you. Joey Haynes is our next speaker. As soon as she gets everything wiped down. As soon as she gets everything wiped down. Good evening, gentlemen. It's good, good, to, good to see y'all all again. Thank you for uh, having this morning and letting people come out and be heard. Just got a few comments. I'm kind of glad I chose to speak now and uh, I guess initially just for the school budget. Um, having a you know, sit here and listen to some of these others speak. Um, I've, I've always felt very blessed. Uh, I grew up here, I went to school here, went off to school and came back here and have been in law practice now for about 21 years. And what I do, what I do for a living and through my involvement with the school system, which has been one of the best things I ever got involved with, um, I feel like it really gives me a, a, a perspective and a chance both as a citizen and as a professional to, uh, you know, I sit here tonight and I, I know I work very closely with Sheriff Kent, with uh, Commonwealth Attorney Brooks, with the Department of Social Services, so many of these people, like Mr. Bernard and Mappy. And, uh, you know, the one thing that's impressed on me is how far, just from my early days growing up here, uh, back in the day, when Mr. McCraw and I were in school together, uh, about how far our county's come. And, uh, you know, I'm very, uh, I've been very proud of the you know, strides that we've made over the years. Um, I uh, uh, Just briefly, uh, I'll watch my time, but uh, I remember when we did this time capsule up in front of our office, and uh, some of the things that people 50 years ago had placed inside that about what they thought Carroll County would be like 50 years later. And, uh, you know, from things with education, from you know, to, to, just all aspects of things. And, you know, when I realized it's short of flying school buses, we don't have that yet. But, uh, but short of that, um, you know, so it, there were visions of real progress. And, you know, when, when I look around and see the things that we've been able to accomplish as a county, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie in a little bit about, this, you know, about the school system. Um, but, but, but particularly about the school system, through education and whatnot, we've made great strides from where we were so many years ago. Um, you know, if we stop and take stock of where we are, um, I, I think, I, I just, I, I do better speaking extemporaneously, but, um, you know, I was listening to Mr. Bernard speak. I happened to be in his office the other day, a matter for my church. Uh, there, you know, some issues come up about the graveyard and the, First thing that I thought about was, hey, our county, our county has something available that can help. And I got an aerial, you know, went and got an aerial picture. I paid for it. It was not something free. And uh, you know, I took that. Now my church has a tool that it can use in managing its cemetery. Um, as a lawyer, um, you know, I've had multiple opportunities, and I know of other attorneys that make use of that service. And I. You know, I think when we're talking about uh, economic development, when we're trying to cast an image out here of what our, uh, of what Carroll County is, if we're saying, hey, come do business in Carroll County, that's one of the most innovative programs that I think we have when people come in. You know, if they, if, if they need some something prepared to help them in a planning tool, we have a ready-made place on the ground to send them to. And so, and, and so again, I think, I think that is a very worthwhile thing, and I would encourage you as a citizen 
I would encourage you to consider if that if that is something uh, within the budget. I would consider uh, asking you to consider maintaining that. I have no relation. Uh, I just I encounter him when I'm in there. But again, as a professional, as a citizen, that's a real beacon of progress that we have here in the county. It'd be a shame to see that go away. Um, you know, on this issue with the day reporting program, and some of this, and again, the reason I'm going to do this is I want to tie this back into my request, uh, kind of on the heels of Dr. Burnett's, and that's where I'm going to close that. But, you know, as we said, uh, the amount of money that's documented that that program has essentially saved the taxpayers from Carroll County and its performance history. If, if I remember my facts correctly, gentlemen, that was, uh, that figure was a figure that was quoted as one of the reasons for cutting our existing school budget back, uh, I believe, some five hundred thousand dollars from last year, is because of the overrun at the jail. Well, you have a you have a program in place. You have a program in place that can help that can help manage those costs. And as an attorney, I can tell you, just as just as Mr. Brooks spoke to, um, when when things start to open back up, I think you're going to see I think you're going to see those kind of numbers swell. And we're going to need creative, innovative ideas, both in terms of the kind of work I do as a lawyer and the kind of work he does as a Commonwealth attorney. I think we're going to need innovative ideas so that we, so that we're able to keep this manageable. Uh, we can't jail our way uh, out of, uh, you know, out of problems with the budget. That we, that's already been shown to be an unsustainable way of doing things because of the deficits that it's caused with spending. And I assume y'all get jail, monthly jail reports. I, I would assume that, that, is, that those figures have been figures that y'all have uh, probably each month been said, gosh, this is higher than it was last month. I'm just guessing. I mean, it seems to be something that, and I think you're going to see those trends again. So as a citizen uh, and as a professional, I would throw my uh, support behind that. Um, Another thing that's very near and dear to my heart, um, where's that light? I don't want to go over my time. Um, another thing that's very near and dear to my heart uh, is the work that I do with children, not just in being involved in the school system, but uh, it's a huge part of my law practice now. I think she said at one point that it may have been up to 90. I dare say that I probably have a third of those children, all right, as uh, at our foster care. That's a huge part of the work that I do as a lawyer now. Um, 40, sometimes 40 hours of my week, but sometimes it's 80 hours a week is spent just working with children. And, uh, and I can tell you, again, tying this in with my role on the school board, those, those children that they are helping to provide services for and meet the needs of families that she, that she is speaking to, those are the kids that are in our school systems that we're educating. And that job is going to be made more difficult, it's going to be made more expensive, and it's going to be made more trying as we come out of COVID because those special needs during this time period, those, those special needs have been amplified to what extent I don't think anybody fully knows right now. And they're going to need, they're going to need your support. And we need them, I would argue, as a person on the school board, we need them to be as functioning in the, to the greatest degree because those children bring all of those issues that happen in all of those families that they provide services to, they're in our school system every day. And it starts with buses, it goes to meals, it goes to behavior, it goes to performance. And I'm not talking about big government, I'm not talking about anything like that. It is just a fact of daily of the daily operation of the school system that 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 these two things are entwined with each other. If you where would our jail costs be if we did not invest, gentlemen, in the kind of services that they provide? And if we did not in our school system embrace the kind of the, the, the kind of ethic that we have in dealing with these children's needs. And so again, as a citizen and as a professional, I ask you to please consider that when you're considering funding for those groups. I'm almost done, I promise. I have one. Oh, I'm way over. Okay. All right. Well, then, also, if you'll give
give me one minute, I'll, I'll finish up uh, again. Didn't mean to do that. Though. Something I've been wanting to say for a long time. I'm just passionate about it. Um, I just, uh, as far as the way all this ties in, our school system coming out of COVID, um, as, as um, our superintendents told you, um, we, we have really attempted to work with a budget that you gentlemen that you gentlemen could work with. I have concerns, I have concerns that going into this year that it that our that our costs are gonna we're gonna we can't we can't operate at optimum uh, optimum efficiency with the with the regulations right now that are in place with COVID. And I just ask you gentlemen as we go through the year to please keep an open ear and understand that we are all trying to be the best stewards that we can for the county, the best servants that we are and can be for the county. And I, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't, I'm not talking to any of these folks about tonight, but we really do here in Carroll County, I feel like we want to work as a team. We just need the basic resources to be able to continue to do that. So thank you for your time and I apologize for going over. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. That concludes everyone who signed up to speak before the county budget. Is there anyone in the audience that did not sign up for the like an opportunity to speak? Okay. Say none at this point, I will close the public hearings at 8.15. I appreciate every single person who came tonight and very sincerely expressed their concerns about this budget. Uh, I, for one, and I suspect that the rest of the five took notes about your request and your concerns, and we will have a meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock to take up some of the discussions that were presented to us tonight. So, again, thank everybody for being here, uh, taking your time to speak and to listen.
motion to um, adjourn from here to reconvene at the county office building. We have another small <coughs> deviation from the agenda. Um, I will call for recess from this meeting and we will reconvene at the county complex at the, in the board uh, conference room for a closed session immediately um, after we, we do that <coughs> as soon as everybody can get there. Do not hear a motion to recess this meeting and reconvene at the uh, county complex. I make a motion to he says this meeting and reconvene the county complex. Is there a second? No, sir. <coughs> I'll have everybody vote here, Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. McGraw. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. McGraw. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Will. Yes. Yes. Thank everybody again for coming, and um, we will reconvene our normal meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock in the boardroom um, after our closed session tonight. Okay,